and welcome to live stream number 50. Today is Wednesday. It is the 23rd. I'm spitting. Sorry. It is the 23rd of August 2017. And thank you so much for taking the time to join today's live stream. Today's topic uh, is water jet, water jet slash laser and plasma cutter. Now where we got sheet metal inside of Fusion 360. So if you're watching this and this is the first time you're ever checking out uh, these videos, really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, these live streams are about 15 to 30 minutes long, kind of loose, not too structured. Um, if there is any kind of future topic you would like, go down the description area. You will find uh, my email address, lars.christensen.autodesk.com. Definitely more than welcome to email me any future topic you would like. So, today's cam, we're going to talk about uh, water jet slash laser slash plasma. And talking about cam, uh, also down in the description area, you will find a link to the free CNC handbook. You go in there, click the link, you put in your email address, nothing will happen with your email address uh, mm -hmm. other than it's just, I'm just capturing it. Um, but I haven't really used it for anything. I was thinking at one point maybe doing a newsletter, but that have never unfolded. But there you will get this great CNC handbook. Uh, so no spam or anything. Um, so go and grab that one if you are into CAM. So we got 39 people in here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time in the live stream. So I'm going to go back to you guys in the stream. Let's go in and talk about uh, all this CAM with the new sheet metal functions inside of Fusion. So... If you, uh, if you were on the uh, live stream the other day where we talked about uh, kind of like an intro to, intro to the sheet metal tools inside of Fusion, you kind of uh, familiar with this. If you are not, then you're thinking, what the heck? Well, I went out to my lawnmower and I saw the exhaust sitting there and then the red is kind of like just the, the rest of the part of the lawnmower kind of thing. So we created this little grill protection heat shield from uh, the, the exhaust. And we created it to the point where we had a couple of different bends in it. And, uh, and we, can, we can go in here and, uh, and flatten it. Uh, what, of course, is awesome. Now, a um, couple of people kind of said, all right, that's all great, but you know, what about CAM? We need to be able to make that. And that is one of the awesome things about Fusion, right? Uh, is that we have all these CAM tools uh, in here. So let's talk a little bit about a little bit about that because yes, absolutely. There is a water jet, uh, plasma and laser inside of Fusion 360 ready for you to use. Now, um, one of the things that you should be aware of is that this flat pattern state uh, that we have right now. I can hit um, undo the flat pattern up here. Now we're back to where we were before. I can activate this flat pattern here. We'll bring it back uh, into the flat pattern state. I didn't have a chance to, to reach out to the product manager for sheet metal uh, because I wanted to kind of like get an inside scoop of this, but it's kind of like its own little space. And I know there's a lot of things coming to sheet metal uh, so they're probably thinking ahead with this, uh, uh, with this, but there is the model environment and there, there is the cam environment and they kind of work, uh, together. Now, what I'm going to do while I'm in the model environment is I'm going to kind of like lay this out on a sheet that I'm going to cut, uh, this out of kind of like creating my stock. You don't have to do this next step of creating the plate. You could literally just go into cam and cut this one out. Uh, of like a standard thing, but I wanted to show you what you could do. Uh, so I'm going to turn on my origin and I'm going to start a sketch on that, uh, on that origin, uh, on this face here. I'm going to right click and create a sketch. Um, and uh, I'm just going to use the two point rectangle and kind of this is going to be a big plate. So you see how the numbers in the vertical direction are highlighted. So I could just go in here and type in something like uh, four feet, even though I'm in inches, hit tab, and now I'm on the horizontal length. I'm going to do eight feet uh, right here, and now I kind of have this uh, rectangle that that kind of resembles a four by eight. Um, 
And uh, then the next thing I got to do here is just maybe place it. So I'm going to do D for dimension and just I'm going to make it two inches from the edge. Like you guys do whatever kind of fits to what you're doing. What I'm trying to do here is lay out the stock so I can actually see it um, when I am I'm cutting it in the can. So now with this, I'm going to go in and say I'm going to create this and uh, I'm going to select this sheet here and uh, you will see that there we kind of like have this full sheet here. Now, um, this is going to be minus, whoops, not minus that. This is, <laughs> I have some kind of a link in my, I thought I've already gotten this. Oh my goodness. Where's this from? Um, this is going to be some kind of thickness. I think it's, it's metrics, probably metric, right? I don't know. Something 9.9 .9. uh, thick here. It's going to be minus. Um, and be aware of that down here in the operation. Just make sure you don't cut anything. It's going to be a new body like this. And hit OK. So now I kind of in my bodies folder here in the flattened state. I have a body or kind of like resembles my stock. And I have uh, a sheet metal body. Now I did this first. Because when I go over to uh, the, the cam environment, it actually comes back in where it was when it was before it was unfolded. But if I hit the little plus button up here and activate the sheet metal, you will actually see that it does come in with that plate stock. So like I said, I wanted to reach out to the P product manager about this, but never had a really chance. Uh, I just kind of like play around with this on my own. Rewatch this if this if you were kind of like lost what happened there. But in the model environment, I laid out the plate before in a flattened state before I switched it in can. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of other workaround I'm not aware of. Now in this point here, I'm gonna go in just like anything else in cam. I'm gonna go and create a setup in here, and uh, this setup here um, will. Uh, okay, I gotta make sure. That is sound, right, guys? Somebody don't TD don't have any sound. Do we have sound? I don't want to just sit here and talk to myself. Let's see. All right, good. Eddie can hear me, so I'm assuming. Sorry, TD. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, on your end, but it's recorded. Will be up on YouTube in just about an hour or so. So I go into setup, and uh, if you're not familiar with setup in here, you can choose different uh, kind of operations in here. I have it here on cutting, and actually knows that because it's sheet metal. Um, the next thing down here, model orientation, it actually came in in the right model orientation, and um, I'm just want to point out that I normally just use like Z and X plane. Now, if this is completely new to you, watch some of the other videos, I explain this, or email me, whatever you want. Uh, down in the bottom here, it's asking me for what I'm, uh, what are we gonna cut? And I'm really, right now it's selected both bodies, but it's cool, but I really just wanna select that uh, flattened part, right? The other one is really just used for stock. And I can control that over here on the second tab, um, over here. So the first tab is kind of like where we're setting up uh, what is our XYZ direction uh, and then what are we going to cut and then the second tab we can go in here and we can select from solid and that's why we can select that plate and when we go down to the drop down select from solid I just pick the, the plate here that will give us a true representation when we start cutting this. Now I'm going to go back into my setup tab and I'm actually going over to the box point and I'm just going to choose this uh, corner over here as my uh, pickup for the, 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 the cutting tool, the water jet. I'm going to use a water jet here, uh, whatever you're going to be using. Um, so that's the first that's the first step. So we selected that uh, and now we can we can kind of see this here. Now, um, if we go in here, you will see that we get kind of like the different um, areas in here that you can see the different stuff. All right, so cutting for, for water jet, plasma, and laser 
is this toolbar uh, up here. And there's actually some pretty neat uh, operations in here. The development team, I think, have been pretty smart with this because, um, well, I guess they think things through. Uh, so I'm going to go in here for the tool tab. I'm going to go and hit select. It's going to open up my my uh, my tool library, and I'm just going to go into the samples holder in here. And what I like to do, click on sample, go to type, and then you can see down here you can select what kind of you want. So if I select water jet and hit OK, you will see that I get a couple of water jet items in here now. We talked about the tool libraries before. So if this is brand new information for you, you know, go in and check those live streams out. But I just want to, you know, make you aware of that I can always, if I don't have, if this is not the type of nozzle you have on your water jet or plasma, or whatever you have, just go up to your to your library, create a new library, and I could rename this uh, library whatever I want, right? So maybe I call it. Uh, water jet Lars and you can always go into the sample and you can literally drag and drop that up there so now in Lars's there is a copy of that water jet in the sample right click and hit edit tool and now I can change you know all the information that that you want uh, in here so just be be aware of that okay uh, so select your your tool and then be aware of there's some neat options in here uh, for laser and for uh, water jet. Uh, doesn't really work for plasma, but you can actually etch. What can actually be pretty nice, you can actually etch your bend line. So I think this is pretty neat. So if I click etch and I go over to my geometry tab over here, I can actually uh, select uh, these bend lines. And what is neat about this is in, in, in this case here, I can I will not cut all the way through, uh, but I will just kind of like etch the bend. So when the guy out on the shop floor uh, goes ahead and, um, and, and gets this piece, he can actually see where those bend lines are. I think that is, uh, is pretty cool. So I'm gonna hit okay to that. And that will just kind of like give me uh, that. And of course I can go at this part, I can go ahead and simulate it. And if I turn my stock on, and I don't like the green, so I'm going to change this to ceramic, um, and I hit play, we can now see the water jet uh, cutting, uh, etching those those bend lines. And just to show you quick, if I go out uh, and I post this, um, and I'm going to talk about post in a second. But let me just post this out. All right, whatever I have here, and of course that opens on the other screen. You will see here that I'm getting the G code for that water jet uh, for the edge cutting, uh, turn on cutting, M7, and it cuts down the center with whatever feed rate we specified. It turns off the cutting, M8, moves to the next location, turn it on. So that code uh, is, is in there. I'll get back to post just in a second. Um, the next cut I'm going to make is actually cutting all this out. So the etching was just to create uh, where we are going to uh, make the bands. So I'm going to go to cutting again. And I can select, you know, the same tool here. Now this time I'm just going to say go all the way through. Um, now when you go in here, is, I think this is pretty cool. Um, you get a couple of different options. If I just select the top face here. Um, on this part, um, be aware of that it actually will select, and I hover over here, Mike uh, Matara is the one who creates these pop-up menus, and he does such a great job with his description. Uh, so you can actually select all loops, or will select everything, outer loops or inner loops, just by selecting on that face, what I think is, is absolutely, uh, what is absolutely uh, awesome. Um, that you have these selections in here. You can also select what side, and you can you can actually also add tabs in here. So if you need some tabs um, for uh, you know going in and kind of like cutting it out uh, of the tabs, you could do that. I'm not going to do uh, that here. Um, so if I go ahead here and hit OK, we get our second uh, operation. 
And if we go in, I'm going to select the setup one and I'm going to hit the, again, I'm going to hit the um, simulation button and I'm just going to pass by clicking on the 2D profile here. And then we can hit play and we will see that it's going to, it's the software is smart enough to know to cut out these inside holes first before it cuts the outside. What is awesome that it does that. Uh, so that is the, kind of like that, you know, algorithms that the developers uh, put in there. So it's going to cut up uh, all these uh, different holes. And uh, then the end is going to go ahead and uh, and cut out the outside, the outside shape. So pretty handy. Now, um, one of the other things that I haven't figured out, um, you know, got busy with other stuff, I guess, is about moving, laying out this part, because people ask me about nesting. So there's not a designated nesting tool inside of Fusion right now. Now, I know that Autodesk have a program called TrueNest, and I'm hoping <laughs> that one day some of those powers will be brought into to Fusion so you could actually automatically nest these parts. What I have normally recommended people do is just to go in and use uh, the move copy command. You can kind of like lay them out if you need to lay them out in a specific order. I wasn't able to figure that out uh, before the live stream. Like I said, I didn't have a chance to talk to the product manager. I think because it is in this flat state that maybe that is not an option, but I'm not 100% sure. But there's another tool in there that for cam users works awesome. Let me show you. What we can do is we have this big sheet and we have the part. Um, we can go in here and we can actually highlight these two, uh, two operations and we can right click and we can uh, create what is called a pattern. Now, the pattern, the dialog box open here, and if you're familiar with pattern in CAM, uh, in, in CAD, this is the same, exact the same way. You can do linear patterns, circular patterns, component patterns, and all that stuff. So if I select the direction, I'm going to select this edge here, and uh, you can put some kind of a, I don't know what the spacing is supposed to be here. It's definitely not two inches, probably, that's why six. Uh, and of course, it's going the other way. I'm going to flip the direction there. Uh, we can see we can lay two out like that. And uh, we can actually just add some more instances. I don't know how many we can fit in here. Seven, that looks good. Um, and then we can add an additional direction. So let's go in and add this one here. And uh, let's try 12, no, 17. 17 might work out pretty good. Um, how many can we fit down this, you think? Five, um, like this here, and we have just laid out uh, all the tool path. Now there is a an option in here where you can order by tool or by operation. Let me show you the difference. So if I leave it at tool and I hit okay. Now, of course, this one is only using uh, one tool. What it means is that when we go into simulate here, um, it's going to be a little confusing maybe, and we play through here, it's actually going to do the etching uh, on here. Oh, it's going way too fast. Slow it down. Let's go back to the beginning. Play. So you'll see here it's etching, and then it goes back, and now it's cutting the inside that's going to cut the outside. So right now it's doing, it's doing every single, every single one uh, in here. Um, but maybe I don't want that. Um, I can actually uh, go in if I close out of that and go back into our linear pattern in here. If I change that to uh, order by operation and hit OK. Now you will see that the etching will happen on all the parts. So now it's going to go and add on every single part here. And then it's going to go to the point where it's going to start uh, cutting, cutting every everything uh, out uh, like like this. So I hope that this is kind of helpful to see how you can you can use this. Um, I think that you know, this is one of those things that um, really, I mean, this is 
one of the things I love about Fusion is that we can take a part, we can model it up, but we can actually also go ahead and, and make it, right? So when I'm done with this, I can now go ahead, like I said before, I can go and post it. Now, what I wanted to talk about posts is that up here, um, you do have in the posting dialog, you can choose uh, the different uh, things. So you could choose cutting. And if you choose cutting here, you get a default uh, amount of posts. So there's a plasma, there is um, a water, OMAX, water jet, Tormats, but be aware of that this is not the only post that you have access to with Fusion 360. If you go down here, there is a um, link. And if you click on that, you get this website. And this website is really awesome. Uh, done by uh, the post team. And in here, you can filter also down any type, water, jet, laser, plasma, and you will now see you have a lot more uh, posts available in here uh, that hopefully fits within uh, what type of, uh, of water, jet, plasma, um, and laser that you have uh, on, on your hands. So I hope that this was this was helpful. This is one of the requests I've gotten for a few people, you know, that they want to see not only us modeling something else up, but also taking it to the next level where we actually are uh, are cutting cutting it out. I hope this was this was helpful. Um, I can see that. Um, oh, I can see that we have some spammers again today. Sorry about that, folks. I will definitely try to block them when when we're done with the broadcast here. Well, we are done with. Uh, just about now. Tomorrow is also about cam. I want to show you three uh, of my favorite right mouse click uh, tools that you should that sh you should know about. Uh, same time uh, tomorrow uh, as today. Uh, so I hope that this was useful. I'm going to do as I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. And I'm going to jump into the live stream and say hi to everybody. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And until the next time, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you.